All right, well, good afternoon. We were able to make it out of uh, the metro area, which was good, thank God. Never really feels too good to be uh, immersed in that kind of environment, especially when you spent the last couple weeks out in a place like this. Here we are, 6,500 feet up in the Andes. Looking across, you could see uh, there's an old railroad grade there. I wonder how that went. Uh, there's a couple, you know, rock falls and cave-ins further down uh, that way a little bit that you could see. Uh, it's obviously an abandoned uh, line. <laughs> I can't imagine, uh, you know, building a railroad in this type of environment would uh, go too well for very long. Probably requires a lot of maintenance. Anyway, I want to show you some plants here. It is dry as hell, but uh, we still got some good stuff going on, at least this high up. First off, I want to start with this uh, member of the nightshade family, even though it doesn't really look anything like it. Hard to believe this is a relative of tomatoes. This is a schizanthus. You can see those petals have been dissected. Almost looks like an orchid. Uh, those leaves, I guess, they look a little nightshadish. They look uh, a little bit like uh, one of the solanums. There's the inflorescence right there. Heavily glandular. You could see the gland. Uh, you could see the oils from those uh, glands on my hands. You know, moments like this make me want to learn more about phytochemistry. They make me want to, uh, you know dip my feet into organic chemistry a little bit. I bet no one's ever said that before. Eh, maybe they have. You could just, I mean, look at all those trichomes and glands. I mean, just a heavily resinous, oily plant. And the uh, the resins on it actually smell good. It kind of smells like blackstrap molasses with maybe a little bit more sugar in it. And anyway, there you go. Real nice uh, close-up money shot at a glance. The fruit is a capsule. It looks like it's even got a bug stuck in it right there. Basically just, uh, you know, these, <laughs> when plants are this resinous and this glandular, they basically, they just act like living flypaper. And then there's those uh, wonderful uh, Corollas again, which uh, got a keeled lower petal and uh, should have more anthers than that. Maybe not. Anyway, there's, that's Schizanthus. And that is a... Uh, it's a sketchy wash. If you could, I guess it's more like a canyon. I guess it would be a, a cascada, you know, a waterfall. Okay, and here we have another uh, extremely glandular and oily plant. So leave a resin on your hands. This is a species of Calceolaria, which is uh, in its own family, but is in the uh, order of salvias and mints. They got these little bags. Almost look like a lady slipper orchid. That lower petal. But you really gotta peel that uh, peel that petal down. They get up in there and you can see it's got uh, two stamens, two anthers per stamen. And uh, then you got a little stigma right in the middle right there. And again, just heavily, uh, heavily glandular. Okay, looking across at those hills, you can see everything is brown. It's all dead brown stuff. Okay, except for some shit up on a railroad embankment, those uh, green bushes and whatnot, everything is crispy. This drought is brutal. I guess you got some Trichocerius chiloensis down there. The cacti, they're hanging in there. They're, of course, doing fine. Some of them are blooming. But uh, everything else is crispy, except this guy is doing absolutely fine. This is a large shrub, pretty common, pretty ubiquitous throughout the area. You can see they get up to eight feet wide in some spots. Now looking at it, at first you think it's in a sunflower film, you think it's an Asteraceae. Kind of looks like one of those Ericamarias, one of those rabbit brushes, you know, the Chrysothamnus that you get in the eastern Sierra Nevada. However, it's not. It's actually in the Carrot family Apiaceae. This is a species in the genus Gymnophyton. And I believe it's a Gymnophyton Isatidocarpum. If you could spit that out, that's kind of a mouthful. Anyway, <clears throat> leafless green glabrous stems. You know, pretty waxy, and if you crush these stems, they smell pretty good. They got some nice terpenes in there. This plant is doing fine. You know, drought, dry season, doesn't matter. It's doing absolutely wonderful. There you go, Jim, no fighting, APACA carrot family. Look, it's a mullein. They're just as obnoxious here as they are uh, in California. They're apparently just as invasive, too. Anyway, okay, God, you know, these are all, <laughs> all these plants are so glandular. Here's a member of a family uh, you might know. You could buy their, uh, the fruit of uh, the plant I'm thinking of, uh, you know, for way too much money at a whole paycheck over there. You know, just throwing more money at Jeff Bezos if you want. 
This is a member of the Passifloraceae, the passion flower family. This is a, a plant in the uh, genus Malsherbia. You know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to almost picture it being a passion flower until you look at those uh, alternating petals and sepals. You got five petals up top, and then uh, they're subtended by five sepals that kind of uh, alternate with them. You can see the sepals from the back right there. See, so five sepals alternating uh, with five petals, and you look up close too. And you can see this weird bastard actually has three uh, three styles, three uh, pistillate parts, three styles and stigmas. See, you can see the the stamens. Of course, the male parts are are tipped by those anthers, those black anthers, and then the uh, styles are not. They just look like little white bug antennas. Pretty interesting. And this plant is pretty ubiquitous here, and I'm surprised it's going off uh, during this uh, brutal Chilean drought. Relatively glabrous leaves. Forms kind of a rosette and then uh, sends up uh, these inflorescences. And again, heavily glandular, just like everything, covered in those little hairs. Okay, foothills of the Andes Mountains, about six, 7,000 feet, dry as a bone. Everything kind of looks like shit. Remember, Chile's in a drought. I'll still show you a couple interesting things going on here. Dominant tree here is this guy, Kilaha Sepin area. I guess you can make a tea out of this. I think it's got some medicinal qualities. Not sure what happens if you put it in your ass. Over here we got Coli Guaja, member of the Euphorbiaceae. There's a, the notorious uh, Euphorb fruit up there. And then over here, one of my personal favorites, a member of the Ramnaceae, which remember uh, is a family that has the ability to turn its branches oftentimes into spiny shoots. A lot of uh, desert members of this family. Uh, in California, we get Ceanothus, which you get in the Maritime Chaparral. You get the Buckthorns, etc. in that family too. This is a species in the genus Coletia. And there's actually... There's another species in uh, Brazil, or Argentina, I think, I forget which one, called uh, the anchor plant. And it's called the, it's called the anchor plant because uh, not only are these uh, photosynthetic leafless stems uh, very spiny and, uh, and dangerous to uh, walk into, they're also rather wide and, you know, they kind of tend to look like an anchor. That's why they call it the anchor plant. But uh, Coletti is the genus on this guy. No leaves, and then there's those little... Uh, Ramnaceae uh, capsules, all empty, devoid of fruit, just spent old guys, you know. Now further on down the wash, we get this guy going off, a member of the Asteraceae. It, quite obviously, once you uh, see those uh, capitulas, you can also see, I mean, from the base, it just looks like a, a nondescript, you know, some weedy, uh, thistle-like bullshit. You know, you got some uh, sessile leaves, of course they're glandular as hell, actually smells pretty good. And I'm not talking about the flowers, just the foliage. But then get up and look at that foliage. Oh, that's pretty nice. Entirely uh, legulate flowers. You know, no disc flowers, just the rays. You got the styles poking out. And they got a little bit of coloration on them. Those ligules have a little bit of pink on them. A relatively uh, elongated uh, involucre, too. That, you know, that little uh, artichoke looking thing with those imbricate bricks, those imbricate filaries. It's a pretty nice one. And it's, uh, it seems to be everywhere. Just uh, blooming up here at 6,600 feet up. And then, of course, uh, since South America is the epicenter of diversity, the origin, or is thought to be the origin, for uh, the sunflower family Asteraceae, we got another species of uh, Mutissia. You know, hard to believe that's, uh, it's not, you know... <laughs> It's not your average uh, sunflower. It's not your, uh, not a DYC, not a damn yellow composite, not just some boring uh, weedy senecio, but uh, you know a rather uh, pretty incredible flower morphology. And again, that foliage is is pretty stiff and leathery. It's pretty chlorophyll. It's not the, uh, it's not soft. It's not dainty. You know, it's uh, obviously from a somewhat dry environment, which this is, especially during a drought. You can see those styles are just massive. Ligules are uh, relatively long and slender too. You know, almost lanceolate. And then of course you can see the pappus hairs sticking out. The pappus hairs stick to those achenes. I have not found many uh, good achenes in any of these plants. Not, not many fertile achenes, not many fertile seed. Just uh, for some reason, I don't know if there's a beetle or what, but something's taking them out. Anyway, there you go. New species of Mutissia. Seems to be a vine. A little Scandinavian. 
There you go. There's a wonderful population of that schizanthus. Remember, schizanthus, again, is in the Solanaceae, the nightshade family. And like many plants in that family, they contain a lot of weird uh, alkaloids, you know, which, of course, are produced as secondary metabolites. So that's those are uh, compounds that don't aid in the direct growth and development of the plant, but, uh, you know, have evolved to aid it in its natural habitat with pest control, uh, detering herbivory, uh, detering fungi, etc. And... Uh, just a ton of a ton of weird alkaloids. You could see them. I bet that's a lot of what's in those glands right there. Probably 15 genera. They're in their own subfamily in a nightshade family. Now alkaloids, of course, end in INE, caffeine, morphine, mescaline, scopalamine. And who knows uh who knows what they do? I haven't really uh, looked into it too much, but they are, you know, most of those most of those alkaloids, those solanaceous alkaloids are pretty uh they produce a varied and strong physiological effects on a mammalian body. And again, this thing, you know, we're at 7,000 feet now. This thing is going off despite the drought. And uh, it smells pretty, oh, even just touching it, look. Just touching it, I, I get a little bit of that resin on my hands. Anyway, pretty, pretty interesting uh, plant right here. Got stamens at two different levels. And again, those petals are just highly dissected. Remember the, uh, ah, Jesus Christ, just stung me just now. Of the lowest ACA right there, we've just got stung again. Kind of feels like stinging nettles, a little bit meaner than that. Lowest ACA is the genus Loasa, a lot of variation on this in uh, Chile and Central America. Or South America, excuse me. You could see those prominent stingers right there. And those buds that haven't opened yet. Unlike um, some of the other species we've seen, this one has rather large leaves. Just uh, coming up in the rock pile at 7,000. And of course, here's our old friend Chucky Uraga, one of the basal asters, basal sunflower family members. Look at those individual florets with those long ass corolla tubes. And then you got the styles poking out of those. Uh, very, uh, very stiff and prickly foliage. Not very nice to touch, and it, but it does smell nice. It smells absolutely wonderful. And it's coming up, uh, you know, just like it was an Ericamaria species. You know, just like we're on the east side of, of the Sierra Nevada mountains. I mean, the whole, it, the climate kind of feels like that, like the Eastern Sierra. There's Chucky Raga all up there, too. Oh, yeah, there you go. Piss bottle number 37. Trucking, the world's loveliest profession. Look at that. Can't get enough of them. Okay, now look at that. We actually got some running water up there. Uh, you got a little bit of snow, uh, which is pretty incredible. And this, this genus of plants, some of you might know. I kind of hate the one that we see in horticulture all the time. You'll know it commonly as nasturtium, uh, but uh, I do love this species. They're both in the same genus. This is Tropaeolum polyphylum. You can see it's just going off, going off right here. It's in the order Brassicales, same order as kale, but it's in its own uh, family. Look at that dense cluster of flowers. They got the, the Corolla's got a little spur on them. Got palmate leaves. And there's something else. They're going off everywhere, you know? Little herbaceous perennial. They got a root somewhere beneath all this talus and rock and shit, you know? There's a tuberous root. Oh, that's pretty nice. Doesn't that make you feel nice? Doesn't it uh, that make your worries go away for a little bit? More up there. And there's that pink shit that's Chysanthus again. Wonderful plant. The smell of black strip molasses. Let's go check out what's down by the creek. Oh shit, look at that. It's a species of Phacelia. Surprised to see this down here. We get this, uh, of course, in Western North America. Lots of uh, species in a genus in the West, Western United States, Mexico, etc. What the shit. But to see it down here, rather broad leaves, too. Just covered in hairs. They're growing in a rock pile next to a goddamn stream. This is weird. Wasn't expecting to see this guy. Look, it's a monkey flower. It's a species of erythranth. You know, another ubiquitous genus in California. Get quite a few of them. Yet here it is growing in the fucking Andes at 9,000 foot elevation. Super glabrous. Hey, how about that? Huh? A home away from home.
pretty interesting to come down here and realize I know so many of these genera already. Big ass red dot on that uh, lower labia petal, that lower lobe. It's a chiopera, that velcro leaf family, lower sacea, the same, the same uh, bastard that was stinging me earlier. You can see that he's got the stingers on him. Kind of feels like nettles a little bit. Beautiful flowers though. Very strange. They look like a bag. Like when you go to the Jewel Osco and I say, do you want a bag with that? Do you need a bag? Weird ass calyx too. Ah, fuck. What is that? What are those? Oh, those are the sepals. Highly dissected sepals. Covered in stingers. Just uh, multiple stamens. Lower sacia. All right, here's that tropalium flower. As you see, you got five petals, five sepals. The five sepals are those relatively, uh, are comparatively boring bracts in the back, uh, you know, in the shape of a star. And then the petals, of course, you got those two uh, posterior upper petals with the uh, red striations on them, and you got the tree down here. I'm holding one of them down my thumb. Uh, look in there, you can see quite a number of stamens. Anthers have fallen off a couple of them. That is, they're not uh, putting out pollen no more. And then you got that uh, central stigma. How many, uh, how many stamens? It looks like you got eight. Yeah, maybe you got eight. Eight stamens, only anthers on uh, four of them still. And then you got that spur. Oh, that's pretty nice. So, you know, judging from that uh, U-shape of that valley over there, you could tell that uh, this whole area was glaciated at once, which is probably why this lake is here. It's basically the remnants of uh, the glacier. You know, whenever, I'd assume, I don't know, 10,000, 20,000 years ago, uh, the glacier was still present. But you could see, remember, anytime you get a valley carved and it's in the shape of a U, not a V, that's generally by ice and glaciers, not a river. Anyway, Christ. We're up at about 10,000 feet right now. As you can see, the trail right here is uh, relatively sketchy, and this is wide for this trail. It basically uh, goes along the edge of this lake, becomes very narrow terrain, is very steep and sketchy, uh, even to me. But I want to show you uh, one of these uh, mutisioid asters. You know, basically a basal member of the sunflower family, or more, uh, more correctly put, a modern member of uh, a relatively old lineage of the sunflower family. This is a species in the genus Perezia. Now, you'll hear me using the word mutisioid a lot when I'm talking about a lot of these South American uh, genera of uh, the sunflower family of Asteraceae. Mutisioid refers to uh, the mutisia subfamily uh, known for its uh, very odd uh, corolla shape of those individual florets. You know, each one of those basically white strap-shaped rays, those ligules, uh, basically just, you know, corresponds to an individual florid in there. This, uh, these don't have any discoid flowers. They're all ligulate flowers. Uh, they're extremely weird. You can see they got that uh, relatively elongated uh, capitula, which is just that green part of the, you know, that relatively uh, elongated involucre capitula. So the involucre, remember, is all the bracts. The capitula is the main flower head itself, which again is a sudanthium. It's a, uh, a bunch of flowers aggregated into one to look like uh, one flower. But uh, this, this genus Perezia is real fucking weird. I mean, you see it. Uh, South America, since it's the origin of diversity for the sunflower family, you get a lot of these really weird, uh, you know, modern members of the ancient lineage. Perezia, Nassavia, uh, which is a real fucking weird one. Um, you know, Chukiaraga, which is even older. That's a Barnadizioid. You'll hear me say Barnadizioid and Utisioid. It just means, you know, one of the early branching uh, lineages of uh, the sunflower family. Anyway, there you go. Parisi, you can see it's got this basal rosetta leaves. All these uh, basal asters, these basal sunflowers, they don't have nice foliage. They're very stiff, very prickly, very spiny. Uh, they fucking, to me, they're incredible because I've been obsessed with the sunflower family for a while. You know, it's the second largest plant family. They're fucking everywhere. Very ecologically successful. And this is just another weird variation on them. Anyway, there you go, Parisia.
Okay, so here we go. Here's a nice uh, member of the rose family. This is a species of Vicana. You can see it's got those fruits that almost look like a cremaria with the little stickers on them. And, uh, you know, you look at that foliage up close. It does look like rose family foliage. Dentate margins, palmate leaves. Rose family does a lot of good shit at higher elevations as well. Here you go. There's Elstromeria, probably Alpina. You like that nice blister on my hand from having to turn the uh, the car jack? We got stuck in a sand the other day. That was nice. Here's another species of Azarella, Eureta, carrot family. Except this one don't look as nice as the compacta, which you see way up high, you know, 12,000 feet covering the rocks and shit. You know, I did another video on that. Oh, look, there's a nice, uh, is it a Fedra? You'll see a lot of genera here that uh, you see in North America as well. And it seems that, uh, you know, well, first off, the tropics, the equator acts as a pretty good wall, a pretty good barrier to gene flow. A lot of species that grow in the temperate climates can't, uh, can't adapt to the subtropical and tropical conditions of the equator. But where you do get mountains, my, mountains provide a little milder of a habitat. So, you know, they, they kind of act as like a, I guess, ecological islands, you know, so these plants can go island hopping. Basically, that's how they can make it through the equator is what I'm trying to say, you know? Fucking altitude's fucking with me, okay? You know, I got, a, I got like a 500 milligram a day caffeine habit, okay? You got to cut me some slack, okay? I can't, you know, I don't, all I got is yerba mate, the instant coffee's come, Nescafe's fucking killing me. I, ca I can't stand Nescafe. Nestle's a horrible company. Nescafe tastes like ball sweat. You know, I would rather drink my own piss than Nescafe. I can't do it anymore, you know, and it's really, it's impacting the quality of these videos. It's impacting the quality of the narration. You know, I could go on forever, but I think I'll just stop. And there we go. There's a plant family you probably never heard of before. Shopfi ACA. Don't know where the fuck that came from. Shopfi is Shopfi. Who should name it after a guy, I guess. Just pretty annoying. But look at that foliage. That's pretty cool. Look at those flowers. Almost look uh, polymoniaceous. And then that uh, foliage kind of blue like a juniper. This guy's pretty common up here at 10,000 feet. Okay, this is pretty nice. You know, you see a lot of cool rocks here, but I think blue andesite uh, really takes the cake. You know? I mean, it's an extrusive igneous rock, it looks like, you know, with, with a little bit of porphyry in there, except it's fucking blue, you know? I have not seen anything like this before. Oh, look, you can see where someone, hey, we, they drilling it. The rocks here are extremely unstable, so what they'll do is they were sending up, we found a couple spent mortar shells. Uh, you know, they're basically trying to cause rock falls. They do controlled rock falls uh, before they can, you know, be a dangerous, uh, uncontrolled rock fall, you know? So uh, anyway, that's probably where they where they drilled into it, you know, breaking all the shit apart. But I mean, this is pretty interesting, you know, from a geologic perspective. Anyway, there you go. Looks like a blue andesite, maybe a blue day day site. A nice little monocot. Looks like an irid of some kind. Iridaceae, the iris family. Might be totally wrong on it. Sure does look like it though. But without the flowers, it would just look like. Uh, you know, some boring grass or some shit. And then, you know, of course, everything blooms. You could see, oh, this has only got five. It's missing the other petal. Should have six petals on there. Here's a more complete one. Coming up under the ephedra. The trucker speed plant. And you got a berberis, too. You know, same, uh, I guess it's the same genus now as Oregon grape, as your native uh, Mahonia, if you're in uh, North America. Just a little spiky, uh, unpleasant, uh, at least uh, paratokar, uh, berberis. Everything's just waking up. So this is the spring. Normally, you know, there would be fucking snow everywhere just covering us. I mean, you look at satellite images, there's snow everywhere too. You know, normally I'd assume this would still be buried under snow, but, uh, you know, Chile's in a drought, so... There's nothing. Okay, so once again, we have a species in the genus of Desmia. This one, uh, this one again, is covered in glands like most of them tend to be. This one actually, uh, it, you could say it kind of smells the terpenes coming out of those glands, whatever uh, compounds, whatever secondary metabolites are in those glands. Uh, kind of smell like a moldy bathing suit. Not too nice. 
you could say it's uh, pretty pretty bad. You could say it smells pretty bad. You know, and if, I mean, if I was, uh, you know, a little uh, the cunha or something, I probably would not want to eat this. It tastes, it probably tastes as bad as it smells. Again, like a moldy polyester bathing suit. Works for it, though. See those pinnate leaves? Fabaceae. Oh, look at this guy. We got what appears to be an astragalus or possibly a lathyrus. I'm going to go with astragalus, though. Another uh, genus we get a shit ton of up there in uh, North America. You can see that uh, that Alstromeria alpina is just uh, coming up gangbusters everywhere. None are blooming, though, which is uh, kind of tragic because I bet they're fucking gorgeous when they do. The shit is this? Oh, that's just one of them stackies. It's the stackies, mid-family Lamiaceae. We've seen this everywhere, but, you know, I didn't record it because it's, I mean, you know, whatever. You know, they're nice, but I just, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to say any more about that. There's that Facilia again. Look at those leaves. Another genus we get in North America. Seems like stuff just kind of traveled down these mountains, you know, over the course of a couple hundred thousand million years, whatever. Okay, now see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. See, there, there's the... <laughs> I don't know what trail this is for or for who, but it's pretty sketchy. I mean, I like it. It's nice. It's, you know, the sketchier the better, but, uh, you know, the less disturbance from other people, but... Uh, isn't that, isn't that lake a nice color of blue? You don't get this in the Eastern Sierras. Not like this. Okay, now, uh, you know, over here we got something pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, this is actually real nice. You can see those fruits, those follicles. They kind of look like a milkweed, don't they? That's, uh, well, that's because they are. And uh, here you got some flowers going off. Of course, uh, you know... Apomorphes, that is trademarks for the milkweed subfamily of the oleander family, Apocynaceae, uh, is opposite leaves. They bleed latex. They got the follicles. And uh, they got the flowers over there. They're all tiny, though. They're tiny little flowers. You know, about tr maybe three or four to a bunch. Coming up with the chucky raga. No, no, no. You know what? That's Nesavia. Excuse me. That's a, that's a different basal aster. You know, but it just looks, it just looks like a boxwood or something. Don't you kind of hate boxwoods? Me too. Okay, there you go. There's those flowers. Oh, that's pretty nice. That is, uh, that's pretty good. You know, and if you had a, a fucking microscope or a hand lens, you'd get up in there and look at it. I should, I should see if I could, you know, invest in a, a scope with me to bring out in the field. Would have been nice with that, uh, blood red lake. That uh, thermal lake we were just at. Anyway, if you had a hand lens, you could get up there and look at a gynostegium. How about that? So you got a species of milkweed. Not sure what genus. Growing in, uh, you know, the high Andes at about... This isn't the high Andes. This is like the medium Andes at 10,000 feet. whole lot of sketchy towels to break your ass on up there. Maybe we'll go up there. Okay, there we go. Another member of the iris family. This is Olsinium. You get this genus up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I think you get it in Idaho, too. Is that the Pacific Northwest? I don't know who gives a shit. Anyway, Iris family, the genus you get up there in the Northwest is called, uh, they call it colloquially grass widow. But uh, you get it down here, apparently, too, at 10,000 feet in the Andes. Another, uh, another plant you get uh, up there in the uh, in Western North America, Sinicula. You actually get this, this species, this exact same species, uh, in uh, California. Look at those leaves and those flowers. The carrot family is correct. This is Sinicula graviolens. Hey, how you doing? Did you find some cool stuff to eat? Huh? Did you find some nice plants to ruin? Do you know Karen in Iowa or Susan in Delaware? They're both self-described animal lovers. They love all animals. They got a live, laugh, love placard in their kitchen. No, you don't know? Because I, I could bring you to her. I bet she'd love to have you. You know, you'd be better with her than in this habitat fucking it all up. You are kind of cute though, huh? You eat the, you can't eat that astragalus. It's got, it's got toxic alkaloids in there. Okay? You're nice. You're kind of nice. Oh, but you smell like hell. I don't got nothing for you. You know, that's all it, that's all I am. I'm just a food source to you. You don't want to actually hang, what the fuck happened? You get attacked by a puma or something? Come here. Do you know about Karyophyllaceae? Do you know about Karyophyllaceae? There you go. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. That's not so bad. I'll give you a little scratch behind the ears. How about that? Where are your friends over there? Huh? 
Okay, there's the end of that lake right there, and uh, there's the glacial valley carved in a nice view. Uh, there's actually, there was a glacier, you can't see it now, but uh, you know, it looks about 2,000 feet higher, maybe uh, five kilometers away, there's still a glacier up there. Uh, so this was uh, certainly glaciated, and I didn't, uh, I mean, obviously you could just tell, it's, you know, you don't need a, the presence of a glacier to tell you that. Look at that, look at that nice view. Anyway, coming on the sand, on the volcanic sand, we got another species of Apiaceated carrot family. This one, uh, rather uh, pleasant and robust. Look at those uh, blood red flowers. You know, a lot of a lot of genera in this family, uh, some can be pretty boring. Some can be uh, absolutely fucking enthralling to look at. You know, they do this kind of mad thing. And then they send up these umbels, these kind of globose umbels, which is the kind of that type of inflorescence in what this shit. In fact, I think the family used to be called umbelliferae. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. Back when taxonomy was all fucked up. But uh, now, of course, it's APAC. This is a species in the genus Pozoa. And you could see them. They just appeared now that we're on the sand. They weren't on all that rocky shit we were going through. Look at the leaves, too. Nice red margin on the leaves. A bunch of tiny floors just aggregated into a little uh, globo sumble. Uh, look, there's donkeys up there, uh, ruining habitat up there, too. I wonder what the wonderful plants they're eating. Dear Karen in Iowa, can you please come adopt these and, you know, take them with the rest of the animals you're hoarding? Hey, you'd be doing us all a favor. Just gotta find somebody to pay for shipping. Hey, now, one of the most pleasant things to hear when you're out... Uh, looking for plants with somebody in a pretty uh, extreme environment, uh, especially when you haven't been to before, is what the fuck is this? Uh, which uh, my uh, uh, compatriot over here uh, just uttered. And uh, indeed, it appears, of course, to be a member of the Asteraceae, the sunflower family. It even appears to be a, a member of the genus Senecio, which is a, a genus I get kind of bored with, don't care too much for. But this one is pretty fucking exquisite. You can see it's coming up in uh, the glacial valley. Uh, it'd be on the uh, volcanic sand, the result of all that grinding from the, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of ice that once uh, sat in this very valley. So the substrate is this volcanic sand, of course. But uh, you can see those uh, capitulas before they open. They got a nice red color to them. And uh, those styles are just poking out so prominent, looking like uh, little fuzzy balls. Do you like fuzzy balls? You want to dangle? Never mind. I'm sorry. I don't know why I always got to take it there. This is why, uh, this is why it's not family-friendly entertainment. Of course, if I was, uh, I'd probably kill myself. Anyway, here you go. Looks like a species of Senecio. Pretty waxy foliage. Growing up here at 10,000 feet in a, a glacial valley next to a glacial lake. Even smells, uh, yeah, it smells pretty nice. Get up there and look at those, uh, individual Corollas in it. Uh, they're rather globose capitula, that Sudantium. Okay, variations on a theme. Don't know what this is, but uh, with that succulent foliage, those uh, looks like what seem to be betalane pigments, looking at that red color, and uh, looking at the flowers, which seem mostly closed up, I'm going to go with uh, this plant being in the family Montiaceae and probably a species of sustained. You can see, uh, I guess the Corollas are still on there. What a fucking weird plant. What a lovely plant. Yeah, that's an odd one. That's pretty weird. That's pretty nice. Growing at 10,000 feet. Look at those Corollas. What is going on with those Corollas? They look like uh, bloodshot eyes, kind of, you know? Oh, here's a nice one. This one's pretty. This is pretty nice. Como se dice nice, okay, nice. Okay, this is a species in a family Calisaraceae which we don't get in the Northern Hemisphere. I believe it's entirely South American, and it mostly, uh, except for two, ger two genera, likes to uh, hang out uh, in the Andes. It's mostly in the Andes. Interesting thing about it is that it's uh, a sister family to the sunflower family, Asteraceae, you know, which is why I give a shit about it, because I love that goddamn family. Anyway, it looks like a cabbage and a sunflower banged, kind of, you know? So you got the... Uh, a bunch of little tiny florets aggregated into one. I don't know what you would call I guess you could call it a capitula. It's a sudanthium. You know, and the foliage is kind of rubbery. So there you go. Calisaraceae. I don't know how they came up with that. I mean, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. But I just, uh, 
I don't got my handy light and dictionary on me. Apparently the ants are gone, gangbusters for it. There's a speed, there's a genus in this which has a fucking hilarious, I think it's Boopus or Boomus or something. I think it's Boopus. Boofus, whatever the fuck. I don't know. And that's actually, that you'll find that in the lowlands. But up here in the Andes at 10,000 feet, you're going to come across quite a few species in a genus, uh, Gamacarpha. Fucking fever fever. This fucker is everywhere. It stinks. Asteraceae. Non-native invasive. The herbalists love this shit, though, because it's good for something if you put it in your ass. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice uh, species in Asavia. Probably Nasavia cumingii, one of the basal asteraceae, the basal sunflowers, mutisioid subfamily, prickly ass foliage, rather stiff, woody, doesn't even look like a goddamn sunflower until you get up close, you look at that uh, capitula right there, you see all those styles poking out, they get weird down here man, South America's got the weirdest sunflowers. You know, almost looks like one of those uh, aracoids, those prickly ass aracoids. Bilabia corollas. So you got a capitula, you got a capitula, a bunch of capitulas aggregated into one secondary capitula. One secondary cluster, about four or five flowers, four or five florets per capitula, and then they're all packed together in one big globose, uh, I guess you call it a synflorescence. Now what do you, there's a word for that, I forget the name, I'll have to look it up later. But when you, it's basically a secondary capitula, you got a bunch of flowers grouped together in one. They got a little cup. They're sitting in, in volker, and they do, they they're put together with a bunch of other little ones, uh, capitulas drawn in a secondary in volker. So a cup within a cup, basically. Oh, look! Hey, it's one of those uh, high altitude uh, rosalite that is forming a rosette violas. A little violet that the Andes are so uh, the Andes mountains are so well, well known for. I think uh, the rosette ones are in their own uh, their own separate clad. I think it's Andina or something like that. I forget. It's a little violet. Now I don't normally pay attention to the genus Viola in California. They kind of bore the shit out of me. But uh, down here they're pretty fucking interesting because they're growing at 10,000 feet. They form these little weird looking rosettes. This one doesn't look like it's in too good a shape. Uh, Viola atropapuria grows around here too. Another weird looking rosalite one. This one you can see the leaves got those little hairs on them. Uh, there's the flowers right there kind of peeking out from uh, in between those leaf, those leaf bricks. And then looks like they got a little, the flowers got a little pedicel or a peduncle rather, a little branch. See that guy? Looks like this guy's done. Done flowering. I think this is uh, Viola Montagnei. Okay, so, so five miles in. The objective has become to find more of those violets. But uh, there's so many goddamn horses everywhere, you could see trails of them and whatnot. And I bet those violets are fucking delicious if you're a horse. So they've probably not all of them down. Now, this wouldn't be a problem, of course, if there were still predators. But I'm sure all the pumas and what the shit have been killed off. You know, I don't know if uh, predators, I don't even know if pumas would necessarily take a horse, but they'd scare them away. You know, they would have. Uh, at least get them to be a little more wary, not so comfortable. Maybe eat some of the younger ones. I'm guessing most of these horses are just feral, just abandoned. Because there's no homesteads here, but uh Yeah, this is how plants uh this is how plants get uh, locally extirpated, aka wiped out from an entire area. Oh yeah. Everything's just not down. Just not down by the little uh, hoofed lawnmowers. That are everywhere. Look at that. Astromarius. But they love the Astromarius. Now this place is kind of beat. Thanks to uh, the overabundance of uh, domestic grazing animals and the uh, obviously the lack of predators to scare the shit out of them and uh, keep them on the move. Alright, moving right along. Yeah, there's no violas up there. Got some uh, nice erythrantho. Some nice monkey flowers. And it looks like, uh, you know, a lot more of this. A lot more uphill. Haven't had much water. Jack I said I am. I didn't think to bring any. You know, I didn't know we'd be doing a 10 mile round tripper, you know. Yeah, anyway, no violas. Time to go back.
uh, back down to sketchy little uh, canyon. Here we go, Viola Montagna. There's another one going off. You can see all those tiny purple flowers coming up from uh, from the center right there, from the axis in between the little leaves. The leaves, of course, again, they got those hairs on them. You know, this is the second plant we've seen. We surveyed this whole area, only just seen that little one. We've seen a bunch of dead ones. I think the drought took a bunch out. Probably horses took a couple more out. Probably just the drought, though. I mean, it's, this, uh, you know, this area should still be under snow this time of year. And uh, there's barely any. Uh, yeah, you could see the railroad up. Uh, it didn't last too long, I don't think. I think they had some problems with maintenance over there. 39. Yep, that's uh, that's number 43. Oh my God. This guy's got to get his kidneys checked. I, I've seen worse though. I've seen worse. 46. You know, holy mother of God. What is going on? Does nobody just drink water anymore? What is it? This just sugar and taurine and all kinds of... This sh that's got to be so bad for you. You know? Hello, uh, hello dialysis at age 50. Fucking... Oh, yeah, there we go. There's that Alstroemeria we've been seeing everywhere blooming. I think it's spatulata. Oh, that's nice. If only there were more Alstroemeria in the world than less piss bottles. You know? I don't know if the truckers notice, but you can piss in a bottle and then just dump the piss out of the bottle later on instead of throwing the entire bottle on the side of the freeway, you know, to turn a horrible brown color and show show the entire world what disgusting shit you've been putting in your bodies, you know, in the form of uh, a taurine, caffeine, sugar, fucking high fructose corn syrup, caramel color flavoring. Anyway, focusing on the Estramaria, you can see that style... Typical uh, lilyoid style, right there, three lobed, three branched, and I got six stamens. No anthers on any of them except these down here. These still got the anthers on them. Look at those big ass anthers. Big ass anthers, just like when uh, Leon tells uh, Larry David he's got long ass balls. Big ass anthers on us. What a beautiful plant. Elstromeria, everybody. Holy shit, look at this. Looks like an ephedra, but it's not. It's a verbena, verbenaceae. There's the flower. One single flower. Probably because it's so goddamn dry. Oops, I just broke it by accident. Oh, well. Anyway, that flower smells incredible. Junelia scoparia. Look at that. A verbena that looks like an ephedra. A relative of lantana that looks like ephedra. All right, now up here at about 10,000 feet uh, in the Department of Weird-Ass Plants. And we have uh, this guy. You just take a quick look at him. This guy's a member of the genus Viola, which, you know, I don't pay much attention to the genus in the Northern Hemisphere. It's because it's just, I don't know, just not too charismatic to me. You know, they're little dainty, uh, herbaceous things. You know, a lot of them, uh, some annuals, some perennials, and eh, whatever. One big man. But up here in the Andes, mountain range at 10,000 feet and above they get really goddamn weird this guy's not flowering unfortunately but uh we'll see maybe higher up there maybe higher up there's some going off just form this little coalescent rosette really weird just coming up in the talus there's a couple more Oh yeah, so that that's, uh, you know, we were way up there, and uh, there weren't any more violas up there. There were some nice uh, basal asters, some weird looking fucking sunflowers, uh, and then coming down was uh, sketchy and terrifying as hell. But uh, here's another patch of that nice viola, viola atropurpurea. I mean, it's incredible to think that this is even a violet. I tell you, man, this, this genus has done some real weird shit in the Andes. Just forming these rosettes. Growing in pure rack. 
Maybe rock with a little bit of sand. Look, there's a little guy. Yep, that's a violet. <laughs> there's a flower. Growing at 10,000 feet. Look at it. I wonder how old these plants are. So you can see the, the flowers coming out from in between the leaves. Just all these little tiny rosettes. Here's a large one. And then over here, they just, they're just blending in with the talus. Alien. They look like something you'd see on the bottom of the ocean. That lovely uh, rosette pattern. It's pretty nice. It's fucking cold out. I think it's time to. I think it's time to get in the van. At least put a hoodie on. Alright, that's it for tonight. Have a nice night. Go fuck yourself. Bye.